Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, the parable of the loan money or the talents. So Jesus is discussing the signs of a second coming and the end of the age. In Matthew 25, tells us the two parables on the second coming. The first parable, which I did last week, was about the ten bridesmaids. And we'll discuss the parable of the talents in this video. The parable of the bridesmaids is about being prepared while waiting for Christ's return. The one of the talents is about the works we need to do while we are waiting. So verses 14 through 30 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to to the last, dividing in proportion to their abilities, then he left for his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money, earn five more. The servant with the two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used the, his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops where you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. And I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I'd harvest crops I didn't plant and gather crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have given some interest on it then he ordered take the money from the servant and give one to the ten bags of silver to those who use well what are given even more will be given they will have an abundance and for those who do nothing even what little they have will be taken away now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of the teeth so in some of the other bibles it says the the bags of gold but either way Jesus is talking about a talent. And this is a, use, a unit of measurement for weight of a precious metal. And like I said, it was either gold or silver. And it weighs around 75 pounds. So this is around 20 years worth of wages. In today's times, it would be worth somewhere between, around $1.6 million. So there's two views to this parable. There's a practical view and an eternal view. In the practical sense, while Jesus is away, believers are to do something. To show that they are hard, to show the hard work that believers do, there will be a reward awaiting. First, we'll look at the practical view. So the master is Jesus, and the servants are us. The bags of gold or silver is the life resources, the natural abilities, something of value, gifts given by God, expected to be used to increase, to glorify God, and expand His kingdom. So this is an accumulation of a lifetime of living. And we need to remember that these are gifts from God. They're not our gifts. They're not from ourselves, but they're gifts from God. So verse 14 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. So the man is Jesus, gone between his first and second comings. He's out to prepare a place for us, and we don't know when he's going to return. So he entrusts his wealth to us. And what's that wealth? His people, which is a valuable commodity to God. So verse 15 says, He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Then he left on his trip. So the key point here is based on their ability. God knows that everyone doesn't have the same abilities. Everyone has a genetic signature that makes us different. And he entrusts only to you what he knows you can handle. 
So it's like the God makes the world go round. He gives everybody different types of abilities. So all society can work together. And God doesn't want to set us up for failure. So he gives it in according to our abilities. It's like a car. I have two sons, Matthew and Sean. And I have other stepsons. But let's just say that they first got their driver's license and they're 16 years old. I wouldn't go buy them a Lamborghini to drive. Knowing that their ability to drive isn't as good as someone who's been dri driving for 25 years. So you would get them a car that's not as, va as valuable and something that isn't as powerful as a Lamborghini. And it's also like a job promotion. It wouldn't be business-like if you promoted a person that you knew could not do their job. You know, you don't want to set someone up for failure, and God doesn't do that with us. So everyone has an equal opportunity to be faithful with the gifts that God gives them. Some of the examples of the gifts or the bags of silver could be money. You know, God gave you your money. What are you doing with your money for the glory of God? He gives you ability. What do you do well? Are you using that ability that God gave you for his glory? Are you a good speaker like Billy Graham? Are you an artist like a guy that does amazing paintings, Abraham Hunter? Are you a musician, a writer? Or even the ability of being a listener? Are you in authority or positions? Are you using these things for the glory of God? Are you an owner of a business? Are you in management? Are you a mother, a father, a grandma, a sister, a brother, or a friend? You know, we can all be using our positions in work, management, and family to glorify God. And also our possessions. Are we using the resources that God gives us for the glory of God. Like if you have a car. You could drive someone to church. Remember that these are God's gifts. They're not ours. What if you don't think you have any gifts. Or you're too old to do anything. You can always pray for someone. Remember the master God. Owns everything. And we are the stewards of his possessions. And we are here to management. And then it says in that verse. That after this he left and went on his journey. So Jesus is now in heaven. Preparing a place for us. So verses 16 through 18 says, This servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with the two bags of silver also went to work, and he earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. So the one with the five bags of silver has leadership skills. It's kind of like the Billy Grahams or the preachers in the pulpits. The ones who can has the ability to lead, lead several people to God. And the one with the one bag dug a hole and hid his master's money. And the people who don't believe or don't care to help or are just too lazy to invest in his portion of wealth for the return. But thank you, Jesus, for pointing out the guy with the two bags of silver. Because that's most of us. That's 90 to 95 percent of the Christians. That puts in a spot for those who don't have the gift of leadership or to help lead several people to God. You know, they're the ones that can't be like the Billy Grahams and the pulpit leaders. But that shows us that we have a place that we can lead our family members, just one or two people, or even a group of people. We still have that ability. God still gives everyone an equal ability. What we do with our bags of silver or our talents is up to us. And we need to do this to please God and not ourselves or to get the applause of other people. We need to make God happy, not other people. So verse 19 says, After a long time their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. So after a long time, Jesus has been gone for a long time, and we need not to forget that he's going to return. And when he does return, he's gonna, we're going to have to give an account. And Jesus is going to settle these accounts. We will all be judged based on, on Jesus' second coming, all the believers and non-believers. Ecclesiastes says, 12.7 says, A dust returns to the ground it came from, and spirit returns to God who gave it. So our bodies will turn to dust because we are made from that. We are made from the dirt of the earth. And our spirit will, will return to God because he created us. And our spirit will return back to the creator for judgment. So verses 20-23 20 through 23 says, the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. 
The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount, so now I give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling these small things, and I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. So you see here, the reward is the same for the person who had the five bags of silver and the two bags of silver. And the reward is not on the greatness, but the faithfulness. And the energy and the labor they exert will bear fruit. So Jesus tells them that you have been faithful with a few things, so he will put them in charge of many other things. He will give you more responsibilities. And remember, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And what happens when you work good at a job or work hard at a job? They give you more work. And I know that sounds crazy, but the reward should be joy of self-worth. And knowing that you accomplish something, that you're trusted by your boss to get more things done. So you're a lot, you're an asset to that company, not a liability. So you get a fulfillment and accomplishment of the things you do. Like example, like example is going to the gym. The harder you work out at the gym, your body will show that what you're doing. Or if you go to church, the more you go to church, the more spiritually you become sound. Just like going to the gym, you'll get spiritually healthy and physically healthier. So the more responsibility gives you, the more gifts you will receive. And one thing, I was never a good speaker in school. And I'm not good at articulating about what I want to say, and I stumble over my words a lot. But one thing I can say, when I started reading the Bible, God opened up a whole bunch of new talents for me that I never thought I had. I had never read a book before, from cover to cover. And when I do read, my mind drifts off. But when I read the Bible, I can stay focused. And God gave me the new gift or showed me the new gift of courage. Never I thought in a lifetime that I would do videos or even preach the word of God. But here I am. 2 Corinthians 8.12 says, For it is the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what he has, not according to what he ha does not have. So if you're willing, God will show you new talents you never thought you had. You have to be able to take a risk. Where there's no, re re where there's no risk, there will be no reward. And the main point is doubling God's prize. That's what you see in the verses at the end of verses 21 and 23. Come and share your master's happiness. You get the applause of God. The single most important part of your life, sharing the happiness with your master. So now, now the next verses, 24 through 30, are all directed to the one who buried his bag of silver. So verse 24 says, Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant, and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. So the servant got the wrong impression of the master. He didn't take the time to know him, and he felt like he was just unjust and unmerciful. And ben Franklin once said, An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So if you invest in God and you get the knowledge of knowing God, it's going to pay the best interest in your life. And look what the service would have gotten if he invested some time in the master and got to know him. Some people view God as a hard God with a list of rules and laws that cannot be followed. Some people see that people who don't deserve gifts get an abundance of gifts and can't figure out why. You know, for example, like evil rich people or athletes and actors that aren't Christian. You know, why does God bless them but maybe god doesn't bless them maybe they get their powers and in, in that from the evil from satan and others they blame something from their past for a reason to hate god you know they were abused or they lost a loved one and there's no foundation in jesus you know we go through storms in life there's a there's two types of storms there's a correction storm and a perfection storm and someone with a good, solid foundation, God's going to send something that will correct them and, and realize that you need God. If we don't go through trials in life, in life we'll, we won't need God. So we have to do that to perfect us. And some people, it pushes them away, and some people, it brings them closer to God. But the one who received the greater amounts of silver were the good and faithful ones. And the one who received the least were pro would probably fail in his duty. But one thing you got to remember he still got a chance from that master. He was given a small chance, a small amount of grace, but he never exercised it. 
So verse 25 says, I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. So he confessed that he lived in fear. So he just buried the gold, his bags of silver, so he would not have to risk of losing anything because he was afraid that he would be punished. So verse 26 says, But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate. So the master's response to this wicked and lazy servant was, so he repeats the accusation, but he doesn't plead guilty to it because it isn't true. He called the servant wicked because he had a job to do and he didn't do it. And he knew what God wanted from him and he knew what God wanted him to do, but he didn't do it. He may not invest it because he was evil or he may not invest it because he was lazy. And everyone has gifts and if you bury these gifts, it's not going to be good. The word, the words of the master below the false excuse. The words is a, a false excuse and reveals the faults that eat away at the servant's heart and soul. So people all look the same on the outside, but we don't know spiritually how they are internally. We can't tell the gift difference, but God knows. He knows their heart, he knows their mind, and he knows their soul, and he knows what you're thinking at all times. So verse 27 says, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. So the master tells him he could at least gave it to a banker and gain a little bit of interest on the investment. At least it would have showed that he did or tried something. This servant spent more time and more effort finding a place and digging a hole than it would have been, than it would have been to just do the work. This is a good example of people dodging work at work. If they spend more time dodging work than it would be to do the job. And he chose to, to use his gift on his own. And he was absent of God with all his resources. So what did he do? We don't know. The master is saying that if what I say is true, if what you say is true about me, then you have should, should have worked harder in pleasing me and found out who I was. So we need to find out who God is and find out what would we can do to make him happy. If you're not going to do what you're called to do, at least give the provision to someone else who will at least do what I want them to do. So give that gift to someone else. Give it to a pastor or help someone else. If somebody comes to you and asks about God and if you can't do that to glorify God, find someone who can. Point them in the right direction. At least he'd done something. So verse 28 says, Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. So the master takes the bags of silver away from the wicked and lazy one and trusts it in someone who will invest wisely. So verse 29 says, To those who use well, they are given. Even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. So if we refuse to use what he gives us, he will take it away and give it to someone else. The master says, there, If there, where there is a risk, there is there will be a reward. Money makes money. And the poor, unpractical man shall lose even a little of what he possesses. So there's five practical takeaways that we can get from this parable. Jesus is the master who owns everything, and we, the servants, manage it. Jesus expects us to use whatever he entrusts to us for his glory. Don't be an idle person. Be busy and faithful in the time Jesus gives us. A misunderstanding of God is no excuse for poor stewardship. And where there is no risk for God, there will be no reward from God. So verse 30 says, Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And this is the eternal punishment. This is eternal. There will be stripping and separating away from God forever. So Jesus uses this parable that uses practical everyday things to show an eternal value. Revelations 21, 23 through 24 says, The city does not need sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives light, and the light the Lamb is its lamp. The nation will walk by its light, and the King of the earth will bring splendor into it. So darkness means separated from God forever. Where there is darkness, there is no light. And weeping and gnashing of the teeth means intense suffering, means no rest. Jesus offers rest for the soul in Matthew chapters 11 and 12. In hell there was no rest ever again. Imagine working all night or driving all night and how tired you are. 
and you just love to get back into bed so you can rest. But imagine being in hell for eternity where you never get rest again. So what has Jesus entrusted to you that is your greatest value? And that greatest value that Jesus has for us is salvation. So the internal aspects of the bags of gold in this parable is salvation, or the good news, or the gospel. And the return on the investment is the duplication of our own salvation. You know, the first second, the first servant, he can help lead several people to salvation. The second servant, it might even be one or just your family members or your co-workers. But at least you've done something. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if God invests in us Christians, we need to invest, invest in God. The takeaway from this parable is the seeds of the church. What would happen if them 120 people in the upper room in Acts 1 had not gone out and spread the good news about Jesus? And then there's the resurrection. Where would we be today? Maybe that's why the world is getting more evil, because there are less and less people spreading the word today. Without the resurrection, we have nothing. Jesus conquered death when he got resurrected. And remember, in Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So, we have an election. God elected these people who believe in him. And, our, and he challenges us to go out and spread the word. God puts us in a specific time, in a specific place for a specific reason. We need to figure out our talent. The purpose why God has us here and what his plan is for us. And we need to go out and take a risk and double our investments that God entrusts on us. So we need to serve where we are deployed. If I live in Union, South Carolina, I need to serve. I need to bloom where I'm planted. I need to bloom. God planted me here. I need to spread the word for him to bring glory to his name. In the end... I'll, I'll end it with this. John 14, 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's why Jesus says the gates to heaven is narrow. Because he is the only way to get salvation. He is the only way we can get to the Father. He's the only way to God. That salvation was paid in full for us on that cross when Jesus hung there and shed his blood for us. He willingly gave up his life and sacrificed himself for us. So I believe that we can sacrifice a few hours of our day or a few hours of our week for God. Invest in God. That's the greatest investment you'll ever make. Amen. Thank you for listening to my videos. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please leave a comment in the comment section. And I hope everyone got something out of this video today. You know, just salvation. God gives you a talent, use it for his glory. God gives you your money, he gives you all your possessions. He owns everything, I'm just here to manage it. We're here to manage it as Christians. Thank you for listening, amen.